You guys can sit down if you want. <laughs> oh, I regret doing this with a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. Felt cool as a cucumber earlier. <laughs> All right. Um, thanks for you guys for me. So, welcome everybody. Uh, let's get this started so we can get to the open bar. <laughs> <laughs> So on behalf of Lauren and Tim, thank you all for coming. We very much appreciate y'all taking the time to be here with us as we send Lauren and Tim off into the great existential void that is marriage. <laughs> and more importantly, the thrill of filing joint taxes and sharing healthcare. <laughs> for those of you who don't know me, you're lost. I'm Alex, I'm Lauren's older brother uh, and notorious glutton for attention hence my otherwise unjustifiable presence here today as the officiant. Uh, I have literally no qualifications to do this, but for the next 10 minutes, I would like for you to think of me not as a rookie wookie, blah, wedding officiant, but rather as your pilot or your captain on this journey of love and marriage and eventually to the open bar. <laughs> Uh, when Lauren and Tim asked me to do this, I was shocked, and I think they made a huge mistake, but I'm incredibly honored to be here. Uh, as I was processing this opportunity, our mom, Cheryl, contacted me and said, oh, Alex, don't make this whole wedding officiant thing a big joke. I want this to be a nice day. And I was like, all right, you know, that makes sense. That's fair, mom. But I do have to respect the wishes of the bride and groom to keep the ceremony as light and humorous as possible. So ladies and gentlemen, welcome again to my very first Netflix comedy special. <laughs> <laughs> or as our mom likes to call it, Lauren and Tim's wedding. <laughs> um, in all seriousness, thank you all for joining us here today. Uh, to witness the marriage of my little sister, Lauren Merrill, and this big, handsome hero, Timothy Alford. <laughs> uh, we have family here today that's come all the way from the United Kingdom. Uh, Tim's family is here from Northern California. And I believe we even have some brave travelers from the great metropolis of Clovis, California. <laughs> so, people really do anything for a free meal, huh? <laughs> So, once again, Lauren beat me to the punch in a major life milestone. I'm her, I'm her older brother. She graduated college early. She bought a house before me. She had 18 brain surgeries before me. She dated a bald guy before me. She's done it all. And I've been fortunate enough to benefit from Lauren's precocious and industrious nature for most of my life. In Lauren, I always have someone close by to look at for inspiration and motivation. I've got a friend to lean on and talk to that lives right down the road. She's also my coworker, and I really admire her prof professional ethic very much. Uh, recently, she snagged me a great brother-in-law and Tim, so nice job. <laughs> That's working out well for me. Uh, <laughs> Um, but Lauren, you, you truly are one of the most authentic, hardest working and honest people I know, which makes sense because those are in fact some of the very same qualities you told me you love about Tim. What a narcissist. Yeah, they find somebody just as wonderful as you are. <laughs> Tim, I can't say anything less about you, buddy. Um, I couldn't have hoped for anything. <laughs> I couldn't have hoped for a more capable and loving partner for my sister. Seriously. Everything I've been lucky enough to have in my relationship with Lauren, I feel fortunate to say I've also gained with you as a brother-in-law. Uh, Tim is a man of incomparable character and resolve. Professionally, Tim's an engineer for CAL FIRE, um, which undoubtedly ingratiated him into the family because my grandpa was also a firefighter and chief. Uh, Tim is incredibly dedicated to his work, but always prioritizes being available for family time at the Merrills. Whether it's helping my parents build a gazebo, taking trips to the cabin, 
or developing whiskey tastings for us. You're always just the same thoughtful, helpful Tim. Yeah, we love you, Tim. Um, I love that even though you both have demanding jobs and uh, rigorous dog parenting duties and such, <laughs> you still squeeze in time to do cool stuff together, whether that's exploring the great outdoors, traveling for craft beer, watching nine hours of uninterrupted investigation discovery channel with Mr. Feeney on the couch. <laughs> and uh, you're, you're both always there for us when we need you. You're both amazing and industrious people. And frankly, it disgusts me. <laughs> um, when I asked Tim and Lauren to tell me the story of their relationship, it all started at Eureka Burger over beers. Shocker. What's the theme of this wedding? Unhealthy coping skills? <laughs> Little did the other know that Lauren and Tim uh, both went home after this first date and talked about how enthralled they were with each other. This was an absolute anomaly coming from Lauren, who's perpetually dissatisfied with almost every human interaction. <laughs> including this wedding. <laughs> You're so uncomfortable. You're doing great. Keep it up. Um, so I knew Tim had to be good news. Um, so shortly afterwards, Tim needed a roommate. Lauren was available. So here we are at the altar. That's love, baby. I mean, there's a whole beautiful, you know, five-year love affair in there, but we'll skip through that. Lauren specifically told me, you're here to be funny, not mushy. And she's the boss today. So, um, in planning for this day, I asked Lauren and Tim to each craft a list of what they love about the other person, uh, which I've already kind of touched on a little bit. I've also asked them to tell me what they find to be utterly infuriating about one another. <laughs> because for me, there's really no satisfaction quite like ruining a beautiful moment with the ones you love. <laughs> but let's continue with the positive for a moment longer. Both Lauren and Tim identified their respective ability to go with the flow as an important character as important characteristics exemplified by the other person and i really think that there's something profound in that because what i heard in that reflection is you don't care what you're doing as long as you're together and that's because you're perfect for each other unless tim wants to go see a movie and lauren will make him go by himself <laughs> it's true the last spider-man movie <laughs> um I need a drink. So, <laughs> so Lauren also identified Tim's dedication to fitness and commitment, uh, commitment to work as qualities of paramount importance to her. And I would agree, those are the two of the timmiest things about Tim, <laughs> which made it unbelievably funny when Tim threw his back out, picking up a pair of socks <laughs> on our very first family vacation together about five years ago. It was, yeah, Tim was done though. it was rough. <laughs> and, uh, but little did he know that complaining about the way those vicious little Tootsie Shields mangled his dainty firefighter body, he was putting together the building blocks for a solid relationship with my dad. <laughs> a man who loves nothing more than to complain about minor physical ailments. <laughs> And with the five of us trapped in the car together, an unbreakable bond was struck. <laughs> it is a true story. <laughs> but I digress. Back to the list. Uh, Tim noted that he admires Lauren for her strong and decisive personality, which I would certainly agree with. I see that with Lauren both in her professional life and personal life. But I had to know how this manifested in their personal life. Um, so I asked him to give me an example of this to use during my Netflix comedy special. <laughs> and Tim explained that one time during their first year of dating, he saw Lauren getting some water from the Brita in the fridge. Lauren was bent over with her head in the fridge. This is one of those fridges with the freezer on the top, fridge on the bottom, okay? So Tim, like the stealthy opportunist he is, snuck up behind her to give her a real friendly scare Lauren cracks her head on the roof of the fridge, drops the glass, breaks the glass. There's water spilling everywhere. The Brit, <laughs> Brit is spilling water. Just a beautiful scene. Lauren exemplifying her. 
Am I good? No. She doesn't want to hear you anymore. I, I'm loud. I can do this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Lauren drops the glass. There's water spewing everywhere. It's a beautiful scene. And Lauren, exemplifying her strong and decisive personality, said to Tim with a shit-eating sneer, <laughs> You can clean this up. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta say, Tim, this I can see why you want to marry my sister. She's a real piece. <laughs> All right. Well, guys, um, at this point, I think it's fair to say that we've been crushing it up here at my wedding. Yeah. <laughs> but before I inevitably crash and burn up here, let's take a moment to acknowledge our families. So, Tim's parents, Susan and Phil, Go ahead and stand up. <laughs> As a guy who's always asked for a brother growing up and was disappointed with an overachieving sister, <laughs> you guys did me a real solid. <laughs> I can't imagine our family without Tim. He's a great hiking buddy, whiskey connoisseur, and all around good dude. But more importantly, he does a great job taking care of my sister. Thank you so much for everything you guys have done, not just to make this day happen, but for everything you did to raise such an incredible man. Seriously, give it up for the parents of the groom. Okay. I'd also like to thank my parents, Cheryl and Brian. Get on up, get on up. Cheryl, get on up, come on. Boy, did you make a mistake letting me get up here. <laughs> but I'm going to try to give you one brief moment of mushy, feel-good, emotional vulnerability. Okay. The kind of stuff that parents want to hear at weddings. Thank God. Uh, but just this one. You raised an amazing kid. Truly an amazing firstborn son. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, but I don't know what else I can say about Lauren that I haven't already said. Um, she's my best friend, she's an incredible co-worker, and she's a monumental pain in the ass. And that's all thanks to you guys. So. Um, thanks not just for the work you put into this day, but the three decades of work you put into us. Um, our character and that of the company we keep here today is a direct reflection of your exceptional efforts. Um, give it up for the parents of the bride. Woo! That's all you get, no more. So, based on the template I downloaded off the internet for today, uh, it appears as if we've come to that time known as the Declaration of Intent. And unfortunately, I don't have a good comedic segue for this. So, Tim and Lauren, if you're ready to take each other as husband and wife, you say I do. Yep. yep. You, this is the part where you say I do. I do. I do. <laughs> That's quick. Are you sure? <laughs> Forever's a long time. It's a long time, guys. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> all right, all right, we're almost there, we're almost there. Um, so now for the exchanging of rings, a time-honored tradition in many cultures. But if you hadn't noticed, I haven't had the chance to talk about the things that you hate about each other yet. So, what do you say we combine these two agenda items and get to cocktails? Sounds Sound good? good? Okay. So, I think my pages got mixed up. Give me one second. This is my first wedding. I'm doing great. Okay. Uh, does anybody have the rings? Is that me? Oh, I, is that me? I do. Okay. I do. Just like I planned it. Just like I planned it. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> okay. This is the only part you guys have to do. This is it. We're in the home stretch. <laughs> okay. Tim, please repeat after me. Okay. And I, don't, I don't think my mic's working, so we're just gonna have to be loud. Talk loud. So, please repeat after me. Mm -hmm. I, Timothy Michael Alford, with this ring. Do promise to love and cherish you. I, Michael Alford, do promise to love and cherish you for all of our days. This is real. 
I do promise not to pick up overtime during our planned vacations. <laughs> I do promise not to pick up overtime during our planned vacations. <laughs> I promise not to clean the pool filters while guests are over. <laughs> I promise to stop trying to be funny when you're having a meltdown. <laughs> I promise not to try to be funny while you're having a meltdown. <laughs> I promise to stop giving you words of encouragement during workouts. <laughs> because I know how much you hate the positivity. <laughs> and that's it, baby. We're moving on to Lauren. Right. We're moving. We'll be drinking in no time. All right. Lauren. Okay, I'll break it up for you. <laughs> do, you need, uh, do you need a social story for this? Yeah, I, need, I need my sensor. I need my sensor. <laughs> um, Lauren, please repeat after me. I, Lauren Nicole Merrill. I, Lauren Nicole Merrill. With this ring. With this ring. Do promise to love and cherish you for all our days. Do promise to love and cherish you for all our days. I do promise to put my clean laundry away within two weeks of washing. I do promise to go to the hospital when I need brain surgery. And not play it off like it's a common cold. I promise to stop calling Ubers to go home without telling anyone. Maybe. Not gonna happen. Not gonna happen. And most importantly, I promise to try and stay awake past 9 p.m. on weekends. I promise to try to stay awake past 9 p.m. on weekends. All right, good job, good job. Okay, we're almost there. So, this is typically the part of the ceremony where I give you some sage life advice on how to move forward in your journey together. Uh, but I most assuredly do not have any of that to give. So, um, you guys know exactly what you're doing. No, no parting wisdom needed. Um, and though, of course, there will be difficult times or challenging times in all relationships, uh, you guys have the love and commitment necessary to laugh off those tough times and move forward. I know that because I've seen it um, when you and Cheers, you and Tim, Cheers, sparkling apple cider together on New Year's Eve from the hospital. That was a night that could have been remembered as really tough, um, but a night that you guys both remember as your favorite New Year's Eve together. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen it every time Mr. Feeney destroys yet another Serta sleeper doggy bed. <laughs> and I've seen it most enjoyably when Tim ever so gracefully fell through the ceiling working on a home improvement project, <laughs> gifting Lauren a brand new six foot hole in the ceiling, <laughs> knocking over a shelf full of food, and look at you guys now. <laughs> you're, married. you're getting married. <laughs> yeah. You guys live life well. You handle, you handle your challenges as a unit, and I think you're gonna rock this marriage thing. So uh, according to my current credentials, I have no power invested in me to do anything <laughs> Other than qualify, qualify kids for special ed. Uh, so I don't know what the hell I'm doing up here. But in either case, I now pronounce you husband and wife. Thank you very much. <laughs>